The scriptures state that when the Antichrist rises to power, he will declare himself to be God. Where and when will this happen? Great. And I'm going to just turn to a scripture. I've got a scripture yeah. written down here which uh, confirms basically what, what we're saying. And that scripture for our viewers today is 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 to 4. And the Apostle Paul writes this. Do not let anyone deceive you in any way. And that, that's very important because there's a lot of deception out there at the moment, mm. especially on social media. For that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed. The man who is doomed to destruction. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Mm -hmm. So once again, we have very clear prophetic instruction by the Apostle Paul that the rebellion must have come first. This is most likely talking about the rebellion within the church, the great apostasy or departure from the apostolic faith. Mm -hmm. we, see, we kind of see that happening at the moment where people are, are leaving biblical gospel preaching mm. and they're turning to a seeker gospel mm. which is no, no gospel at all really yeah. I mean, people aren't <clears> being <throat> saved through the seeker message at all so we're seeing the apostasy occur but then after this we're told that the antichrist will arise and we he will proclaim himself that is god and anything that is worshipped and he will set himself up in god's temple now, God's temple hasn't been built yet. It has to be mm -hmm. built upon the Temple Mount. Mm -hmm. and most likely, the Antichrist will set himself up in the Holy of Holies in Jerusalem, declaring himself to be the God of this age. Once again, unless the temple has been rebuilt and it's standing on the Temple Mount and these other events have already taken place, we simply are not at that time for it to occur. So once again, the appearance of the Antichrist is at, at least several years away. Mm -hmm. And the Antichrist will appear at a time in future history when the temple is built, the one world government is in place, the one world religious system is in place, and then at that time he will proclaim himself to be God mm. and uh, would demand that people worship him as such. Yeah, I mean, you can see already Satan's hand within certain churches, as we were saying before, where he is weakening people in the church to you know, sort of filter out watered down messages and they're not getting proper biblical study of the scriptures and understanding of the scriptures fully. And therefore they don't have this proper biblical understanding of when all of these events will take place. And therefore, if you don't have that understanding of it, it's easy to get caught up in some of the things in the world that are being said or done. And, and people kind of panic and say, oh, oh, this is the mark of the beast, or this is that. And that. So this is why it's so important for churches to be teaching these things and to be, have a really good, solid, biblical study, um, because otherwise it is, it's, it's like Satan is, is weakening the churches and it's weakening people's faith, and therefore they, they're not getting this true sort of understanding of what's going to happen in the, the end of days and, and the tribulation, etc. You always know when a church is in trouble because it sacrifices the Bible study for a home group. Mm. And uh, I've been talking to people this week who say that, yeah, they kind of, they met together in home groups, they'd have fun, have games, have barbecues, mm. but they would never talk about God. And this is in the church. Yeah. And when a church sacrifices its Bible study night for a home group night instead to kind of draw in more numbers, mm. that's when the church, in a sense, has ceased to be a church because it's no longer the discipling and evangelizing. It's trying to form a group of people, a community of people, with a little bit of a sprinkling of God. Yeah. But that's not what the church is. No. The church fundamentally and primarily is a place of evangelism mm -hmm. and a place of discipleship. And once again, if the Bible study is being sacrificed for just a home group, it kind of ceases to be a real church. To be a bit wary of a church like that, really, then, isn't it? Be a bit Absolutely. wary of it, I would say. Yeah.